Chris, which will be your new MLS system. Um, you guys, I know, are chomping at the bit to get your hands on it. Today's just going to be a lecture style class. Uh, won't be hands on yet because you don't have access to the system. However, um, hopefully, here in just a couple weeks, you will. So, September is what we're looking for to give you guys access to the new system. So, our agenda today is just to go over the implementation schedule, even though I kind of give you guys a sneak of when it is, um, over some of the listing input changes that have been happening. Thanks. Anyone else see that? Um, any of the listing input changes that we've made? Um, I don't say we as an asset metro list, I say we as in all of you. We've comprised 16 different teams of brokers across the Denver metro that have helped us implement the new changes to the new system. We basically asked you guys what you did not like and what you liked about Prime Access, and we've kind of taken that and um, made this new system tweaked it to our Denver market. Um, it's not anything that we created just for Denver. It's um, an MLS system that is used throughout 200 other MLSs in the nation. Um, so it is tried and true. Other realtors have used it and love it. So um, it, is a, it is a system that's been out there and used. However, we have customized it for our market, obviously. We have our own little language here in the Denver Metro that um, some of the other LSs don't do. So um, we've had the brokers come out and help us with this. So if you guys are unhappy with the system, it's your own fault. Um, <laughs> but no, we are also doing some beta testing now. If any of you guys would like to be part of that beta testing, you can go to eventbrite.com and find out when our next beta testing is and just come to our office and help us with that. So um, it's your last chance to get your feet in there and um, get your input in there if you want to um, have anything change before it launches. We're also going to go through a tour of Matrix. I'm going to show you um, what our system will look like. It is under construction, so I can't go too far into it because it isn't completely built. Um, the input is one of the last things that they'll do. So when we get to the input changes, I'm just going to have to show you guys some wireframes of that. Um, but it'll give you guys an idea of what those pages will look like when they are live. Um, and then communication, bless you. Um, how you guys will hear about when um, the system will launch, or when you'll have access to it, when it will launch, um, what, what's happening. So just wanted to go over that with you guys today. So what are you guys getting with Matrix? Matrix will be your core MLS. It will be fully customizable to how you do your business. We're not going to force you into this is it, this is how you use it, and that's, that's it. Um, where Prime Access does that right now. You have that one page, you come on, and that's it. Um, it'll be fully customizable, meaning the dashboard, which on this um, red flyer here, this is what I'm talking about when I say dashboard. Um, when you log into Matrix, this dashboard will where you, is where you will land. Um, that dashboard will be customizable to how you do your business and how you um, farm your properties. It will also be cross-browser compatible, so no more issues with Internet Explorer or Firefox, um, the current issues that we have right now with Prime Access. So um, I apologize for that, but they're going away very shortly. It will also be cross-device compatible, so if you're on a Mac or a PC or a tablet or an Android or a phone or whatever device, it will um, work on that device. There won't be any silver light issues anymore. Um, you'll be able to use, right now, how many searches do we have in front access? Like 15 different ways we can search, I think. Um, you won't have to worry about that anymore. You'll have the search capability within Matrix. And it'll just be one way, or one search form that you can, again, customize. So um, all those issues that we currently are dealing with will be gone with the new system. Another feature you will be receiving with Matrix is a new tax and deed information, which is called Realist, and that will be on the back side of this sheet. Um, Realist will be your new tax and deed information. Not only does it give you tax and deed information, but it also gives you, um, it's built within Matrix, so within one click, you'll have one page that basically tells you all the property information you need to know. Um, it'll give you the owner's information, the um, and I'll show you an example of this as we go through. The owner's information as well as um, you can get demographics for that zip code and so forth. Yes? Uh, probably jumping ahead here. Is this going to be tied in then to the IRIS also? Because we have issues now with tax and deed and some of it doesn't come through. Um, you will have all counties in Colorado oh, okay. with the realist. So okay. that's a great question. Right now you guys have access to 16 counties through Prime Access. <coughs> And with Realist, you'll have all counties in Colorado. So um, we will still tie into IRIS and um, 
uh, Pikes Peak as well. So you'll still have that data integration as you currently do. So that won't um, change anything. Um, the, oh, one last thing about Realist, the um, information in Realist is also updated more regularly than you currently have. Right now, does anyone know how often the public records information is updated? It must be like six months. <laughs> if you're lucky, uh, depending on the county, it's maybe six months, maybe a year. Right now, um, when we switch over to Realist, you'll have um, updated information one to four times a week. Um, that just depends on how the county records their information, so uh, it's a lot more um, up-to-date information. Go MLS will be an app that we'll be adding to our package in 2014. Uh, we'll get more information out to you once we have um, a better grasp on everything coming with the app, but it will be something that you guys can brand with your um, logo and company information on it, and something that your clients can then download and search themselves. The last piece of the product suite is the MLS data checker. This isn't anything you guys need to be concerned with. This is just kind of um, working in the background, making sure your um, listing is compliant. If for some reason it isn't, it'll send you an email within 24 hours just telling you, please fix these things, and then it will be compliant and submitted to the MLS. So just something to note in the background. Again, as I mentioned, we're going to give you guys access in September. So you'll have access to Matrix in September. However, prime access will still be the primary um, MLS of record. So you'll have access to Matrix, but um, both systems will be live um, in September and October. So what we're doing is we're calling that the launch pad period. That's a 60-day window where you're going to have both systems live. Um, you're going to go into prime access, do any of your input and maintenance in prime access, and then um, you can go into Matrix and set up your uh, contacts, set up your CMAs, and set up your saved searches because those will not migrate over from Prime Access. Um, Susie had sent out an email to you guys with some how-to instructions on how to do that, how to move over your CMAs, and how to move over your saved searches. So you guys should have that in your inbox if you um, haven't looked already. It's in there. Um, but that will tell you guys how to switch that stuff over. So please do that within that 60-day window because once November comes, Prime Access will get shut off and all that information you will not have access to any longer. So make sure to get in whatever you want out of there. Um, again, it is going to be called our Launchpad period, so if you hear us refer to that, that's when both systems are live. Um, how do you sign in? I'm sure you're all wondering. Matrix will have a box just under the MetroList.com website as well as Prime Access. So your username and password you use for Prime Access will be the same username and password you use for Matrix. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, I'm going to go on to the listing input changes. There's some really great changes here, again, that were made by your peers, and I think it's just stuff that probably needed to be um, just some housekeeping that needed to be done in Prime Access. So one thing to note is there will be some auto-populated fields. With um, Realist tied into Matrix, if that property's been in the MLS before, you're going to start typing in some of the information and some of the fields will auto-populate. Um, again, we'll go into more detail with this once we get to the 101 and 201 level classes when the system is live. But just so you guys know, that's going to be a good time saver for you because it will pull that information from the county records. If that information is incorrect, you can go in and change it. But just so you know, that will probably save you some time. Um, if it's never been in the MLS, obviously, then you'd have to start fresh. Um, simplified statuses. We've gotten rid of pending, as you know. We ha now have active under contract um, sold, withdrawn, and expired, so those will be our simplified statuses, and those are going to be the statuses that you can then search for within the system. Uh, we've now changed the single family property type to residential, so you're going to have one search. Right now in Prime Access, if you have a client that's like, I want a townhouse or a condo or a house, I don't know really what I want, um, you have to run how many different searches? At least two, right? So with um, the switch to matrix, we've combined that, so you can actually just do one search, find condos, um, townhouses, and residential within one search. You don't have to do multiple searches. However, if you want to separate them out because you don't want condos or townhouses in your search and just single family, then you do detached or attached single family search. So um, I think it's a really great way. And here's some um, another feature that we. Um, kind of spelled out a little bit more clearly for you. Under contract is another area that was always kind of a gray area within um, Prime Access. 
This will actually give us more information of what's going on in the market, what's really out there and available. So the under contract will now tell you if it's accepting backup offers or not and the contract date, as well as the contingent approval conditions. So if your seller or buyer has a signed offer waiting on lender approval, you just highlight that and then you'll know what the, what the approval condition is for that property. If it's a kick out, they're waiting on um, a home sale, you can note that as well. If there's none, obviously you just click none. But um, I think it just helps spell it out a little bit more for um, the other realtors that are searching for those types of properties. So the detached single family style, again, this has just been reorganized a little bit. Um, you're gonna select the different style, whether it's a patio home, a ranch, um, two story. Then you're gonna select the different architecture, whether it is an A-frame, um, traditional, Victorian. Um, for the attached single family, now this is where it's kind of changed a little bit. So you're gonna select either a condo or a townhouse. The type of unit, whether it's a studio, a cluster, and then this is what I think is some great information. Um, when you're doing input, you can now say well, how many floors are in the unit, what number of units are in the building, what level it's on. So I think it's really helpful, especially when you have those buyers that I do not want a ground level or I do want a ground level um, place. You'll actually be able to specify that out. So anything that you can do in input, you can search for. So that's now a searchable field. Construction and exterior, again, we just kind of went through this and reorganized things. It was kind of all over the place, and you'd have to go here and then there, and you weren't really thinking about construction materials anymore. So we've just reorganized it. Construction materials, exterior materials, and roofing materials. Um, one of the biggest complaints we had with Prime Access was the parking issue. Um, have any of you guys had an issue trying to enter parking into um, Prime Access? Well, now if you have you know, just your two-car garage and an RV space is kind of a problematic thing to enter into Prime Access. So we solved that by giving you um, the option to put garage attached, the number of spaces, the dimensions, the features. And then you'll click more, and then it'll pull up another one of these lines, and then you'll just click RV or whatever the other space is, the number of spaces, dimensions, etc. And you just keep doing it for the number of spaces that that property has, and then this is a dynamic counter up at the top, and it will automatically count up the number of spaces you've entered at the bottom for that property. So that should make that process a little bit smoother, as well as, again, be something that you can search for as well. Um, HOAs, we've now given you three options for HOAs. Um, hopefully you never have to sell a property that has three HOAs, but if you do, you'll now be able to enter all that information in, as well as, um, state how that fee is quoted, which is nice. Um, some other areas that have been reorganized and expanded is the um, detailed room information. Right now in Matrix, you will be able to um, define out every single space in that house. If you wanted to write out every single dimension of all the rooms in the house, you're more than welcome to now. Um, if you just wanted to highlight some of the bigger rooms, like if there was a media room or a special room in that house, you can then give that room description. Um, within matrix. The site and property features have been um, expanded as well. So um, one example is just in the fireplaces. You'll now be able to note if there's a fireplace upstairs or downstairs, if it's gas, if it's wood burning, whatever the features are, you can spell it out now for each um, different property feature. Does anyone in here sell horse and livestock property? Occasionally, that's your field. Um, good. Now we've given you guys some more options with that. Is actually, you're able to spell out if there's barns, if there are stalls, if there's arenas on that property, you can give that information. Um, it gives you the ability to, to detail out that, that information more than you have right now. Um, same with outbuildings. If you've ever had a workshop or a mother-in-law plan on your property, you can then um, add that to your list and input. Another great change is you guys will have 35 high-res photos and I think the biggest time saver with this is that right now with Prime Access, you have to um, keep resizing and resizing. You can only do one picture at a time. But with this, if you took 35 pictures of your property, you just upload that whole folder to uh, Matrix, and it will resize them to the right size, and all 35 photos will go at once. So that will be a huge time saver. Um, another thing to note with this is historical retention. So after the, the property's been off the market for two years, only the primary photo will show. And this is just due to storage 
and a lot of times those properties have um, changed after two years of being on the off the market so you'll need new photos anyway so um, for that reason we have switched it just to only the primary photo will show after two years um, another thing that we are adding is a watermark and the exact watermark hasn't been defined, but down here in the left-hand corner is an idea of what a watermark is. Um, it would probably just be a metro list. And the reason that the brokers wanted this is just, you guys are paying for those photo packages. We want to make sure you're getting the credit you deserve for it and not letting someone come out to a website, scrape that photo, and put their picture next to it when it's something you guys paid for. So um, that is coming as well. So I'm going to um, open up the Colorado version of Matrix and give you guys a little bit of a tour. But before I do that, does anyone have any questions on the input side of things? Some good changes, do you think? Mm -hmm. Those are so quiet. <laughs> a lot for lunch. <laughs> the after lunch crowd's back there. I'm going to have to sit down to do this part. Um, so if you can't hear me in the back, let me know. So this is your beautiful new homepage, yay! <laughs> oh, goodbye, Prime Access. So this is the Metrolist logo, this is the Colorado version. This is when you guys log into that little box at Metrolist.com, this is where it will bring you. Um, again, this is a totally customizable page, however you want it to look, it will look. Um, these little boxes right here that I'm hovering over, they're called widgets. And widgets are interactive boxes that let you move them around on the screen. Um, it's constantly updating the information within that box, so it's nothing you need to refresh on. It will just be interactive and updating as you go. Um, again, the boxes can be moved around if you um, have OCD and you want to alphabetize them. Go ahead. <laughs> That's what your screen will look like every time you log in. Um, if you say, I don't really do statistical reports, just hit the X and it'll close out and go into the additional box. If um, you don't like the market watch and you don't want to see it because you've got too much on your screen at the moment, you can just minimize it and it'll hide the information or you can hit the down arrow and it will bring that information back. Um, if you did decide you wanted something that was in that additional box, just hold it, pull it out, and there it is back on the screen. So pretty simple, you can't break it, so play around with it during that. Um, launch pad period and really get familiar with it. Um, another thing to do in that launch pad period as well is to update your contact information. Go in, set your profile up, set your um, contact information, upload your picture, upload your banner, and I'll kind of go through that here in a minute, but I just want to um, keep that on the top of mind that that's something really important to do within that first um, 60 days. So the first thing I'm going to show you is Market Watch, just because it, everyone always their eyes always go right to those colors, so I'll just start there. Um, Market Watch, I think, is a really great feature that you guys currently do not have. Um, within Market Watch, it's going to tell you in the Denver Metro market what has come on the market. So, um, what there's been 411 new listings. There's been um, 41 back on the market. Price increase, price decrease, under contract, withdrawn. So all our statuses are going to be right there. And then you can customize it. If you do residential, it will default to residential. But if you do land, you can click on land, and it will change that data to the land. Um, again, you can do it within 24 hours, today, three days, seven days. Um, you can look at the market in that way as well. Um, cross property, just to clear this up because I always get this question. Cross property is basically a search you guys will be able to run now. So if you have a, uh, a client that would like a house, but maybe they want some land because they might want to build a house and they're not really sure. You can do a cross property search for them and find land and um, residential. So I'm going to just click on the new listings. So it says that there was 401 new listings within the Denver Metro. Um, this will be what you get. And again, you can customize this information. If, if you just want to look at your farm area, you can go, let me just go back. You can go down here to customize and then draw on the map the area that you tend to work in and then just get the, this market watch data for your area. Um, so that's, I think, another great tool. So back to the listing sheet, you're going to just see this information um, in a single line display. However, if that's not how you'd like to see them, you'd rather see them in a summary. You can change that uh, by hitting this display up here and it'll show you a summary of those properties. 
Again, this is our site. It's still under construction. Not everything's in there, so there's still some blank spots, but at least you guys get to see the Denver area. Um, again, within the summary, the, these are photo um, scrollers right here, so you don't need to click on the actual listing to get through all the pictures. Um, however, there are little icons here. There's little icons here. If you did want to view the photos for that property, just click that icon and it'll bring you to a larger photo viewer. Um, you can view it on a map, see exactly where that property is located. You can look at the history, all just within one click of um, your, your um, static report that's there every time. Um, this TX over here is Realist. You can launch Realist right from um, the, the listing information. Um, a map on Realist, and if there's a virtual tour for that property. So it's all going to be right there within one click. Again, you can click on the MLS number just to get that property information. Um, again, this is where we're going to have everything integrated within the system. So CTM contracts will be here, showing service, um, Instanet, all these different uh, resources are just going to be one click away for you guys. So you won't have to log out, go into another system. It'll just be right here integrated within Matrix. Um, one question I always get as well is RPR. Has anyone in here used RPR? Just a couple. It still will be around. It's not going anywhere, so you'll still be able to have access to it and use RPR um, for your searches and your comps. Okay. So that's basically Market Watch. Again, Market Watch is going to give you all the different properties um, that just came on the market uh, for the Denver Metro. You can go up to these tabs at the top to get back to your home page. <coughs> um, hot sheets are very sim similar to Market Watch. However, hot sheets are just that um, property type, but all the different status changes within that property type. So, um, Market Watch gives you just the new listings and all the new listings for the market. However, hot sheets will say, okay, I'm going to pull up all the residential. And it'll give you all the new, all the expireds, all the withdrawns, all the solds for residential. So does that kind of make sense to everyone, the difference between the two? Once you go in and play with it, it makes a little bit more sense, but it does um, it does, it does, let you look at just every single different property, um, different property type and those, um, the changes to those different property types. So look, that's the difference between those two. Um, now I'm just going to go into search and show you what the search page looks like. So currently in Prime Access, you've got those 15 different searches. Every time you're in a different location, you're going to run a different search because you might be on your um, iPad, you might be on your laptop, you might be um, synced in, you might be able to use uh, Silverlight, you might not be able to. So you won't have to worry about that anymore because you'll just have this one page. And this page is very customizable, but it's you don't have to learn how, where everything is. I'm sure you will eventually will. But um, every one of these tabs up at the top, they kind of all have the same look and feel to them. So once you kind of get comfortable with how this is, works, they'll all kind of work the same. If you're ever questioning what to put in a space, there's a question mark right here. You can hover over it, and it'll tell you a little description of what we're asking you for and how to enter that information. So it's a good little way to um, look in there without having to call us first. Obviously, we'll still be there if you want to call us, but that's just another quick way of doing it. Um, so I'm just going to put in some quick information. Um, my buyer actually wants a specific builder, so I can go down here and add and remove fields. Um, so you can say, oh, they, they want RV parking in this particular one, or this particular one wanted, if you said you did horse properties, you can do horse property features and add that to your um, your search page. And it'll always show up down here at the bottom. It won't go anywhere until you remove it. So if it's something that you just did once and you're like, I don't want that at the bottom of my page, just go back to um, add and remove and remove it. Otherwise, you can keep it down there. And if it's something you use a lot, you can always um, add that to your search criteria. So I'm just going to put in some generic criteria here. And um, you'll see at the bottom here is the dynamic counter. There's no need to click on how many anymore. It'll just tell you how many by what you um, what criteria you're asking for. So then I'm going to look at the map. 
Um, there's a map tab up at the top. And I'll move over by your office. I'm the really probably most familiar with this. Um, so I'm going to click on the polygon at the top, and I'm just going to draw a polygon quickly on my map. And it's going to get rid of all the other properties that um, are not within that map search. But I know my client does not want to live by, um, by six, so I'm just going to exclude that area. So I'm going to draw a rectangle, click exclude, and any properties that were in that box but the plane, um, will then be excluded from your search criteria, from your search results. So you can draw multiple shapes if they want to look in um, Wheat Ridge, but maybe they want to look downtown Denver, or maybe they want to look in Highlands Ranch, or they have no idea where they want to live. I'm sure you've never had that buyer, right? <laughs> um, they always know what they want and where they want it. Um, they, you can draw different shapes. You can exclude things in different shapes um, go from there. But yeah. If you drew a shape and it was too big of a shape, you can then resize that shape. You don't have to start all over and draw another map. You can just fix it right here. Um, I'm just going to exclude this information. So I'm going to go back to that red dot and hit exclude this shape. Or I can actually just delete that shape. So all these properties right here, how many properties do I have? Up in the left-hand corner, that it'll tell you there's a counter telling you that there's 33 properties in that shape I just drew. You can also hover over each one and kind of get an idea of about how much um, it is. You can click on them, and it'll pull up a little box with a picture and show you some um, property information right there. Otherwise, you can just click on the tab up here that says results. Results will then give you a line item um, display of all the results of those properties that fit your client's needs. Um, I am just going to, I'll click on one of the um, listing pages. So if this is your listing, sorry, not all the information's in there. <laughs> Some people are like, but that's not right. I'm like, it's not all in there yet, so don't quote us on how this is. But it just gives you an idea of what the new listing sheet will look like. Um, again, this is something you can print, you can email it out to your clients, you can save it as a PDF. Um, you can pull statistical reports. Um, with one click down here on this button bar just on this one property, and you can do a CMA on the property just from the button bar down here at the bottom. Um, let me go back to all my results. Okay, so I'm going to select these, you know, four properties that I think my client will really like, and I want to send them off to my client. Um, that's going to be their new saved search. That will be their new, um, we're going to send them to a client portal. So that a client portal, it sounds like a scary term, but it's actually a really great feature that you guys don't have now, but um, I think we'll really appreciate. We're going to have a two hour class on it as well. So if you guys want to come in and take that class, I highly recommend it. It will give you guys the, um, the feel for as a realtor how you can use it and then as a client how they will use it as well so you'll be able to play both uh, wear both hats in that class and just kind of get a good feel for um, how the um, client portal will work so I, I selected my properties and um, I want to email them out to my client so in prime access you have to enter that client every single time you want to send something to them in Matrix, you'll be able to create a new contact just by knowing their first, last name, and an email. Um, so you can hit two, and if it's a client that you already have in your contact base, you can then select that client, select multiple clients, and hit OK. You don't have to copy yourself. You can if you want to, but it's not really necessary any longer. Oops. Click two, click OK. Um, again, you can create a new contact right from this screen. Type in the subject and the properties, and then, and obviously, a custom email that you would want to send out to your um, client. And what that email will look like would be this right here. You don't have to read it works because you guys have customized it yourself. But the most important thing about the screen is just seeing this right here. 
This is a link that will then take them to their customer portal. The client, or I'm sorry, the client portal. The client portal is then where they will get that email that you sent them. Um, they don't always have to save your emails, this particular email, because once they have this link, they can then save that link as a favorite and always go back to the favorites. Um, so that link will then bring them to their client portal. And I'm going to switch over to the Austin system right now. Um, I'm going to answer your question. Yeah. Can we sync like our Outlook contacts and just load them in there, or are we building contacts each time? Um, you can save them as a CSV file and upload them to the new system. And that was one of the handouts that um, was emailed to you. So that's the how-to um, flyer that tells you how to do that. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to send, once they click on that link, it's going to send them to what we're calling the client portal. And the client portal, again, is totally customizable. This banner up here will be your face, um, your branding information, your contact information up here. Um, the email that I just sent them will show up right here. This Think of this as their inbox, okay? So this will be their <coughs> inbox. They can't delete anything, so you don't have to keep resending them emails. They said, oh, I don't know where that email went. They just go to their portal, and there it is. Um, anytime that you guys have a, a search set up for them within the system, they'll just come right here, and they can see what properties um, became available. The properties, once they're in the system, if you guys are on the system and say, um, I put in a property and you were looking for that specific criteria for that property, if you're on the system, you're going to see it immediately. If you have a search set up for your client, they're going to get it within 15 minutes of it being entered in the system. So quite a bit faster than the 24 hours you guys have to wait right now, especially in this market the way it is. Um, I think it's going to be a really awesome feature for you. Um, so it's going to show up right here in their inbox. If you guys ever send them a statistical report, a CMA, again, it'll show up right here. You can send them driving directions as well to your, the properties you're going to show them that weekend. Again, it'll show up right there within their inbox. Um, no need to lose emails anymore and not know where they were. You guys will also have access to their portal from the back end, so you'll be able to spy on your clients. You can now say, oh, um, if they're, they're wondering what, which email, which driving directions one are you talking about? I don't remember which one it is. You can go in and say, okay, it was the fourth one down. That's the one I'm talking about. So you're going to be able to see it from the back end. You're going to be able to see how often they went into the portal, what they've done in their portal. You can totally spy on your clients if you want to. You can be the big brother. Um, you can see over here there is a photo scroller, and this is where they put their favorites. So once they've clicked on the link, they've looked at the different properties, they've selected favorites. So this will just kind of a reminder of, oh, yeah, I did like that property. Is that, and if for some reason, um, okay, again, this is Austin's system, so they're going to have different statuses up here. It'll still say if it's active, but if for some reason they marked that um, particular property as a favorite and it got sold, it will tell them it's sold. So they'll know, oh, I can move a little bit faster because the properties are going. Um, over here is just where um, it's going to show you how many favorites they have, how many possibilities, and how many are in the recycle bin. Um, it's, don't look at the recycle bin as a trash can because really it is something they can pull back out if they're like, oh, I didn't like that one because it was way too expensive. Well, it could always have a price decrease, and then they can pull it back out. Mm -hmm. So they can look through any of those buckets there. This here in the middle is just a message from you. I highly recommend keeping this very generic because it will go out to all your clients. So if you say, hi, Julie, and it's going out to Mark, he's going to be like, who's Julie? Um, so just keep that very um, generic within that um, box right there, even though I know they have it customized there. Uh, but everyone plays. There's like six of us that have these accounts. So every time we go in there, it's, no, it's, um, it's always on you, and you never know who you're going to follow. But I'm just going to click on this so you guys can see. So once they have their properties um, sent out to them, again, this is Austin, they can go in and click on the MLS numbers to take a look at those properties further. If they like the property, they can favorite them, they can possibility, they can discard it. They can also leave you a note. So there's a, a section up here where it says, I love the trees in the front yard. That was the note that they put. Um, can we see this? Weekend, and then type and click add a note. So it's something that simple where they can be in constant communication with you. Again, in order to receive that note, you're going to go back to your home page where you your dashboard, and um, you'll see. 
um, recent portal visitors, and it'll show you, oh, I've got a note in here from Joey and Joe Bagadoni. So um, you'll be able to see that from here. One thing that they are working on is sending you guys an email once there is a note in um, the dashboard. Right now, what you guys will have to do is go to your dashboard. It is something that Matrix um, has been made aware of by us and several other MLSs that could you just send us an email? We're not always logged into the system. So um, they're gonna start sending out emails probably next year um, with that information. But for now, you'll have to go into your um, dashboard and you'll be able to see right here in this little box that there's been a note left for you. So you can click on that and it'll bring you to um, that property and then you can see what that note was. I love when we, when we go see it this weekend right through the system. So I'm going to go back to um, so this again it shows you on the map if they wanted to say okay this realtor is crazy there has to be more than three properties that fit my price range that are what I am looking for that fit my criteria I'm going to make my own search so where do they currently go if they want to do that? Zillow, 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 Trulia, and then what happens? They get more information. Right. They end up with a property that they are in love with, it's but it's been sold ago. for like six months. And you're like, no. You know, I just feel like it makes you guys look bad as realtors because then they discount your credibility and it's not your fault. That's Zillow and Trulia's way of keeping people coming back to their site because they're getting lots of hits on those properties. So they're not going to take them down. Why? When it's driving traffic to their website for free. So, um, you won't have to worry about that anymore because they can do their own search right from their portal. So up here is a search box. They can go in there, put their criteria in. They can then um, draw on the map, you know, their circle, you know, change their change where they want to look. If they were like, oh, I'm not finding what I want in Parker. I want maybe I want maybe I need to move over to um, Highlands Ranch or wherever. They can then um, make that change on their map and have their own searches set up. And again, since you guys have access to the back end, you'll see what searches they've set up um, and start that conversation. Okay, well, we're looking in Wheat Ridge, and now I see a, set, a search set up for Westminster. Should I redo your criteria? Um, that's just one feature that you guys will have that you didn't have before. Um, sending them those static pages, I just think, is such a, um, a disadvantage that you guys are currently at, which this system is going to overcome. So I think. <coughs> Something to look forward to. Again, they can they they use the map just like you would. And again, this is something that um, you can tell your clients, "Hey, I'm giving you the tools I'm using as a professional, so you're going to have my professional tools with my branding and my photo on it to remind you who gave you that great information mm -hmm. to make you go to Zillow and find something that was already sold." Um, so again, that's just another tool that you guys will have um, if they had a safe search set up. I'm sure probably. If they had a safe search set up, there would be a box over here that says safe searches, and that's how you would see um, when you go into the back end where their safe searches would be. Um, okay, so any questions on that part? So we sent them an email, we had them go to the client portal, we had them look at their different properties, and now what are we gonna do after they say, okay, I wanna see five properties? You're gonna go where? Google and add all these properties in and figure out how to get there, right? Um, or you're going to go off of the awesome directions that a broker gave you, right? <laughs> Turn left on the street that does not exist, because I feel that. Um, so again, we had these four properties that I sent my clients. I'm going to click down here on directions now, and it's going to automatically give me the fastest way to get to those four properties. If for some reason I'm not starting out over here by... Um, Highway 35, I'm going to add a start location. I'm going to add a stop location. Um, if we're going to meet at Starbucks or something, you can then add that um, to your to your directions. Or if you're like, I'm, I'm actually starting, we're meeting over here, so I want to rearrange that. I'm going to move that property up to the first location, and then it will automatically give you new directions. Just click on the directions. It'll give you, again, the fastest route to that from Google and Bing and um, give you turn-by-turn -turn directions right down here as well. So that starts next month? This yeah, it's been a couple weeks. Yeah. Since I'm being recorded, I can't actually look at the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it should be within the next few weeks. So um, 
again, these driving directions are being, uh, you can email them, you can print them, you can send them as a PDF, um, you can email them and they'll show up in the client portal like we saw earlier. So again, that's all going to house all your information that you send to your client. No more, could you resend me that email? It'll be in their inbox. So um, is that a win? Do you guys like that feature? Is that a little bit easier? Um, underneath my ma my matrix is where you're going to find your contacts. So all your contacts that you've entered in the system will be here. Again, if you want to um, click on that contact, this is where you're going to find more information on what you've done with that client. So you're going to see the portal activity and um, when they've gone into the portal. Again, you can spy on your client. Um, you can see the save searches that you have set up for them. Um, you can also see the CMAs that you sent to that client and go back in and readjust things if you need to. Um, you can find the sent emails that you sent that client. Did I ever send them? I know I sent them that. Didn't I send them that? You can now look. Oh yeah, I did. I sent them that on this date. Um, you can edit the contact data. You can start a CMA. Again, open their portal and walk them through. Okay, it's the fourth one down here. So just. Just something, again, that's just a, a good tool for you guys to use and helpful um, for your clients. One thing that I wanted to mention here is there's what this little box here says open cart. And if you open the cart, which I haven't mentioned yet, it's going to show you um, all the properties that are in that cart and when you, if you email them to your client. And what the cart is, if I go back to that search, Um, so I've got these properties selected. I can go, there's another bar above this button bar that has carts. I can go and say, okay, I, I found these properties while I was searching for Joey Bag of Donuts, but I actually think they'd be really great for Ernest Hemingway. And so I'm going to click on him and it will then put those properties and add them to his cart. So then I can say, okay, I'm, I'm doing something else right now. I'll get back to this, but I can stick them in the cart and I can send them to Ernest Hemingway later today. So I think that's another tool that will help save some time. So I'm going to just add those to his cart. You can also take those properties and save them. You're going to save a new search down here. This is where you would then do your um, prospecting um, reports that you currently send out to your client. It's just being called a save search now. So um, it's pretty self-explanatory what that term means, but some people have asked, well, well how do I send prospect out now? It's just the terms change to save searches. Um, so you're going to Enter that, you can enter the name of that area that you're um, looking in. And then that contacts information, there are obviously all your contacts that are here. Click that and hit save and that will be a new save search. It, you'll be able to also um, discard any of these properties. If you are looking at these properties and say, these four were ones you knew they would hate. You can then discard them and they won't show back up in your search results. So you don't have to keep going back through your results to discard those properties. They just won't show up any longer. Um, okay. I'm going to move on to the statistical reports. Does anyone have any questions from any of this so far before we go forward? Okay. So right now, um, you can run statistical reports in our system. However, they don't always look that pretty. Um, they don't look that professional, but the new reports you guys will have, you'll have some system presets. So that way you're going to have up here in the left hand column, um, some system presets that are already standard um, statistical reports. However, here is my presets. These are presets that you guys can set up that if you're constantly running the same report for your farm area, you can just save them and then it'll automatically go back. It will update that information for you. You don't have to go back and update the information. Um, if you want to change the number of months that you're looking at, you can do that. But if it said three months and you haven't ran this report in six months, it will go back and update that information for the last three months. So um, a nice feature there as well. I'm just going to pull up a quick report here. Um, generates. This is one of the only um, pages you actually have to hit generate on. Otherwise, it will um, it won't pull up the report. 
And you'll sit there and be like, where's my report? Where did it go? And then you'll remember, oh wait, she said pit generate. <laughs> As you're sitting there waiting for it to show up. So again, you can customize these reports however you see fit, however you like to see them, however your client might want to see them. Um, this one is a 3D, so it's kind of funky looking, but um, it may be something that you like or your client would like. You can customize them by going up to this tab at the top and clicking customize. Again, if you don't want to say, the past two years is just too much information, I want to customize it down to the last 12 months, um, just click on that and it will just hit generate and it will change the data right there on the map. So then it gives you just a different chart. These charts, again, can be um, looked at just as data. You can just pull the numbers. If you're a numbers person, you can just use the numbers from here, export them to a CSV file, upload them to um, Excel, play around with the numbers. Um, you can do advanced settings, which help you um, change the style of it. If you didn't like those colors, you could change the colors. If you knew your client preferred pink or you preferred pink, you can change the colors um, to that as well. Again, these can all be printed, saved, um, emailed, saved as a PDF. So if you're doing a CMA and you always want to include this report, um, there's a CMA wizard that's also within um, within Matrix that you'll be able to upload these uh, reports to as well. Currently in Prime Access, you're not able to upload any reports, but with this um, CMA functionality, you'll be able to upload your own reports to it. So that's basically the stat. Um, and then as I was talking about CMAs, does anyone currently use Prime Access to do their CMAs or do you guys use other features like Cloud CMA or somebody who has Cloud CMA? Does anyone use Prime Access? Yeah, not a lot of people do, so I just wanted to check. Um, some people I just think are frustrated with it because it's not what they want. So I'm just going to pull up a, a CMA that we've already done in this system just to show you um, what it would look like. So basically, it's just this wizard right here at the top. And you're just, it's going to walk you through what pages you want, what, um, what pages you would like in your CMA report, what the subject would be, what the cover page would look like. And you're just going to walk through step by step um, and, and use this. This is probably another good tool for you guys to go through during that 60-day time frame and just play with it, see if it's something you would like to use, and maybe you can save some money and not have to use Cloud CMA. Maybe it's something, you know, you still prefer Cloud CMA over this. So um, it's just really a personal preference what you'd like to use. Um, but that is there, that is available. I'm gonna go back and just show you what a, a final CMA would look like. Again, this is something you can um, email and print out for your client. You can save it as a PDF and upload it. Um, this is probably the only time you're going to have a wheel, so this might be a good time to do your bathroom breaks since you're not going to have your normal wheel that you're always getting on in Prime Access. Um, but it will pull up a CMA report. Um, you can't really change. Um, it's, it's just a template, so you can't really change all of the um, the background information, but you can change the pictures, obviously, and all your broker information. So it will give you a good, um, a pretty good looking CMA report, giving you, again, whichever pages you choose, you can remove those pages for different properties if that wasn't um, the one you wanted. It'll give you um, a CMA with the different comps that you chose. Again, it gives you just um, this, the difference with the CMA um, from what you currently use with Prime Access is that Prime Access will give you estimates. This won't give you estimates. It's something that you guys as professionals can then give your input in. So there won't be estimates in there. Some people like it and some people hate it. Again, it's your personal preference with the CMA program. That's why there's so many options because there's so many different uh, ways of doing them. So that's just kind of what a CMA would look like. Um, again, you can print it and save it. Um, you can also, um, look at your client and say, okay, I did send them that CMA. It'll then show up in their inbox in that portal. Uh, I'm gonna pull up Realist. So again, these tabs up at the top, Realist is one of the tabs. And I can pull Realist up and launch the whole Realist site within Matrix. So I don't have to go out, log in to Realist. It's just right there. <coughs> I can also go back to um, Matrix 
and my home page. Let's see. I'm going to go back to the, the search I showed you. And I can just click on, um, so this is back in the Texas system. Their icons are a little bit different than ours. Ours actually say, um, there's a little black box. They actually have a dollar sign for realist. But within one click off of that um, single line display, you're going to pull up a property report. So just from that one line, you can get the owner's information, the location information, the tax information, the assessors, um, the characteristics. If there's ever a description, a discrepancy between the tax and the MLS, it will then note that information right there for you. Um, give you the a real ABM, so it kind of gives you a starting point as to where to start pricing that property if you needed it. Um, it is a very accurate estimate as well, so we are finding um, some accuracy within the ABMs within the beta testing. Um, the listing information, the last time it was sold, the last mortgage history, the foreclosure history. Um, so you're going to have all that property detail within one click. You don't have to go out and search and do all this other stuff to find all that information. So um, if you really wanted more information, you can then launch Realist. You can either do it from um, a link right here within this report or back in Matrix in that Realist tab. So once the Realist launches, this is what it'll look like. Again, we're looking at Austin. So you can enter in the zip code um, of that property. You can enter in um, the street name, the house. You can just do a quick search if you know that owner's last name. You can enter that information there as well. Um, I'm just going to do a quick quick search from Austin. Um, and again, Realist is, once they're searching for all this, since I didn't put a whole lot of criteria in there, this might be another time to have, do your nails or whatever you might do. Um, we'll just show the first one. So with Austin, they have some stuff in here for commercial as well. So, so I'm just going to click. Um, a single family property so we can just see what it would look like. So it's going to pull it up here in a map. Within that little box, it's going to give you some information on that property, um, whatever information it has from the county records. You can click on it to um, zoom in and get that personal information right from um, the map, as well as pulling up the reports. So the reports that we're going to have, we won't have these last two that um, Austin has, but we have property details, comparables, market trends, neighbors, and the neighborhood profile. And this is, um, this information is on the back of this handout. So this is Realist on the, on the back side of it. Um, Realist, so this property detail is just going to kind of be more specific than that first page that we had already looked at through the system. However, you will be able to see at the bottom, it'll pull up that parcel information with the lot dimensions as well as it it on a map, so you'll be able to see where that property is located on a map. So that's kind of a nice feature with the property detail. Um, you'll have compar comparables, market trends. Um, I think that the neighbors report is interesting. I call it the nosy neighbor report because it gives you like 20 to 30 different properties next to that property that you can then um, see who owns that property. You can see. Um, Down here. It gives you um, the address of that property, the subdivision owner name, um, the different square footage, the bedrooms, the bathrooms. So kind of a really good glimpse of what's happening in that neighborhood and what the prices are for that those homes in that neighborhood. Um, again, just kind of scary how much information you can get just with one click and find out who all your neighbors are. Um, you can also do a neighborhood profile. Does anyone ever have um, the question asked, well, what kind of neighborhood is this? Are there little kids in this neighborhood? Is it full of older people? Is it younger people? Is it a college neighborhood? And where do you guys go to find that information now? We're not allowed to say. <laughs> well, no, we can send them places, yeah. Right. So go to the local police department's website. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, now you'll be able to just send them a report. And within this report, it gives you based on a zip code, um, the demographics of the population within that um, particular zip code. So it will give you the age, the gender, the marital status, the housing, the 
the quality of life, like the blue color, white color, um, household income, um, the weather, the commute. I mean, more information than you've ever had within one click. Education level of that particular zip code. Um, the schools that are located in that area. Again, this is something with these hyperlinks they can click on and find more information out. It'll pull it right to that school website. Um, you can pull up churches, you can pull up shopping, you can pull up whatever, hospitals, whatever it is they might be interested in and find that information right here um, on this report. Again, this is something you can print, save, and email to your clients as well. So just some information I think would be helpful Again, it's like, okay, so does it actually say how many times they go to Starbucks mm -hmm. in that neighborhood? I mean, it's so detailed down to the nitty gritty there. So it's a great report that you guys can use, um, even when you're doing research on different neighborhoods that are unfamiliar to you, just kind of get an idea of what type of neighborhood that is. Um, so that is basically for your list in a nutshell. Again, we're gonna have 101 level training classes on your list as well. We'll have a two-hour training session. Um, once our trainings become live, which will be September after you guys have access to it, um, we're going to have those hands-on classes, and there'll be two-hour CE credited classes. And if you guys have any friends that are appraisers, um, we're going to have some classes for appraisers as well, so please spread the word there. Um, but yeah, we're going to have some more hands-on learning with us as well. What are the last two tasks? That are their assessor map and building sketch. And just um, those are just Austin specific. We won't have those okay. um, available to us. So you guys have some homework to do in the meantime. Um, you need to go through your CMAs. You need to go through your same searches and your contacts. Make sure that all that stuff's cleaned up. And um, your how-to documents will be in your inbox. So please walk through that within the 60 days of um, both systems being launched. Um, we're going to want to migrate that stuff over. Review the handouts that you have in front of you. If you have any questions, either contact me um, or um, our care department, and we can get those questions answered for you. And then read your upcoming communications. How many of you guys received this weekly insights newsletter? It comes out on Wednesdays. Anybody? Yeah, it just comes online. Yeah. Does anyone actually read it though? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you have to raise your hands for that. Um, but this is a good place to find good. <laughs> this is a good place to find some information about uh, where we're gonna, when we're gonna launch the system, when you can get access, um, any changes that have come. Um, I know one thing that um, is a hot topic right now is the neighborhood change. So sub areas have changed over to neighborhoods. Um, there was an issue with us not having enough neighborhoods in there initially, so we sent out some communication to you saying, please give us your feedback as to what. Um, areas need to be added to that list and so we've gone through and added thousands more neighborhoods that we're missing and are still adding more neighborhoods so please contact us if there is if you find a neighborhood that isn't in there um, it's going to become a mandatory field so i've heard so it will be something you will have to add whether you have a neighborhood or not um, you can also select none if you happen to be in a rural area that doesn't have neighborhoods um, th that will be an option as well so um, just all that information is going to be contained within your weekly um, insights newsletter. This was another piece of um, one of the PDFs that went out into your e inbox as well, is just how to subscribe back into this. If you unsubscribe because you're tired of hearing from us, now is a good time to subscribe back in, at least for the next few months so you know what's going on. Um, liking us on Facebook and Twitter if you're in social media, um, that's another good way of keeping up um, with all the changes. Again, our um, customer care will still be around. We're actually extending our hours. We're going to um, open up the hours during the week till I think it's 8 o'clock during the week, 6 o'clock on Saturdays, and then we'll be on pager. Um, and we'll be available via pager on Sundays. So we will be accessible to you. We've upped our staff so that we are ready and rocking for this uh, new transition. Um, again, go to metrolist.com to sign up for any training and education that's available. Um, we will also be having um, Learn at Lunch, which will happen every Friday. Is, has anyone done one of those webinars yet? You have? Good. They're going to start doing some more of them. They may be 15, 30 minutes, just kind of depending on the topic. But it's a good way to get a little snippet of information of what's up and coming. And, and how do I do this again? And I'm not sure. How do I upload all my saved searches? Even though you have a how-to sheet, he'll kind of like walk you through it, or whoever the trainer is will walk you through it. Um, additional resources will just go to the Help Center, and that's 
another place you guys can go to find out how to migrate things over from Prime Access to Matrix. And if you guys don't have any questions, we're done a little early. But um, I thank you guys so much. There's a lot of changes coming, but I think it's going to be really exciting. Um, what I want to know from you guys is what is your favorite feature um, with the new change with the new system? Oh, being able to draw on the map and select multiple mm -hmm. areas and exclude areas within our collection. Awesome. Yeah, the map for sure. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a very map centric system. Um, with that being said, uh, the MLS areas have gone away. I know this is a rumor that some people are not really sure. But yes, the MLS areas, the little free acronyms that you um, have to memorize for all those areas, they will go away. Just because the system is so map-centric, you won't need to worry about that any longer. So those are some acronyms that you can forget about since there's a million of them in this industry anyway. Um, we've helped you out with that. Um, with that being said as well, uh, refresh and um, ghosting have gone away. So ghosting was something where, well, it was in this area, but if, if they search for that area, it's not gonna show up in that MLS area because it's really in this MLS area. But So you won't have to pay for ghosting any longer. That um, will be gone. Yeah, That won't be an issue anyway because the map, you can just draw it on the map and that's where um, it'll pop up. Um, so that's gone away. And then as I said, refresh will go away because we have market launch. So you're going to see, oh, there's been a price decrease. I'm going to look at all those houses that have decreased. And so there's not really a need to refresh anymore because as soon as you make a change in um, status, it'll show up right here in the market launch. So those are, those are some other things to note as well. Um, any other questions or any feedback? So when we refresh, that normally sends those things to Realtor.com, does it still do that as well? Still updates it? When you it will if you change your status. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, wow. uh, syndication will stay the same. Uh, the brokers, each managing broker or broker owner has um, the privilege of deciding whether or not they want to syndicate. So um, syndication will remain the same. However, the RET speeds to even your own personal websites have increased. So you should be seeing those speeds um, improve to every 15 minutes. So right now they're going, um, I think it's every 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Um, with this new technology, with the new system, they'll get it every 15 minutes. So that's going to be a good addition as well. And if for some reason you guys are having an issue with your IDX broker, we've contacted all of them that we work with. But if you're having a specific issue with your IDX broker once it goes live um, in November, contact us and we'll get a hold of that specific broker and work with them. But um, from what we've heard, the feedback we've received from all the IDX brokers was it's all working just fine. So we're hoping it'll stay that way throughout the transition. So thank you guys for your patience as well during this time. And we know it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, but I think it's going to be something that will be very beneficial for you guys and give you guys so much more of your day back because you're not sitting there waiting on the computer to do the search or what search do I need to use or I need to find this and I can't do it because Prime Access won't allow me. Um, a lot of people use virtual office. Virtual office will still be around as well. So if that is your um, tool, you can still use it. We'll still have a contract with them. They're going to um, upload or make some changes so that it will um, sync more in tune with Matrix. So um, keep an eye out for that as well. Anything else? Thank you. Uh, being that the searches are coming like every 15 minutes, like when are they sent to your client? Is it like still once a day or is it as soon as they come out? Does so it go in their um, portal? it'll go to their portal and it, you can customize how you want it set up to the client. So if your client wants to know, I need a house right now, I need these as soon as they come on the market, you just click as soon as possible. If you wanted to set, set it up um, once a day, um, you can set it up Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the morning. You can set it up in the afternoon. You can set it up once a month if they're just like, I'm, I'm going to move someday. I just don't know when. Um, you can always set it up just according to however your client wants to receive those emails. And it will send it out um, every 15 minutes. So if they're set up ASAP every 15 minutes that something meets their criteria, they'll be able to see it in their portal. That'd be great if it also said one that said under contract. Right. Yes, they write it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it's in their favorite, they can see that one under contract. But if it, yeah, it won't. Yeah. Um, but you can also set up um, save searches for sold properties. So if you're working with that seller that will not lower their price because their house is worth this, and you're like, but no other house over here has sold for this, you can set them up as um, a contact 
and send them reports that say, okay, these are all the souls in your neighborhood and see what mm -hmm. they can then see for themselves. Those numbers speak louder than your words and say, okay, there, here's some data showing you that this is what the houses have sold for in your area. So it might help a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> help that conversation along anyway. Any other questions? What's the price increase going to be? Uh, right now, for the remainder of um, this year, it'll still remain the same. However, the board is looking at a tiered pricing structure for the following year. So basically, what that will mean is if you're a part-timer, there's probably the first tier is all you're going to need. If you're doing it full-time, you're probably going to want the third tier. And again, it's going to be like you pick and choose what you want in those tiers. It's nothing that we're forcing on you that you have to have everything in this package. But um, you can kind of pick and choose what you want. And the pricing will probably just vary according to what package you get. So that's what they're looking at. There's no numbers to that yet, but that's the word on the street. Mm -hmm. Anything else? You Very mentioned fun. CTM contracts. Will it interface with them? It will. It will. Um, anything that we're currently using will still be available. So um, CTM contracts, it will be with um, centralized showing service um, and the other showing assist. The other showing service. So any of um, anything that we are currently integrated with with Pride Access will be available with um, Matrix and then some. So that will still be there, and RPR will still be available. It, I don't know if there's going to be a button right in Matrix or if it's just you'll have to log in. I think there's still a button, as there is now. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that's still a button. Anything else? Great question. Thank you guys for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any more, let us know. And then um, we get signed up for those 101s. Guess what we'll happened in a couple of weeks? Crazy. I started this, it was like, oh, a few months from now. And now I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> Talking about that monster gravity kind of thing is scary. Getting it out. Well, that's nice. Or I'm getting I'm getting this. Because that's gonna stop. I mean like seriously, someone like walk through that thing. And I'm like stopping in their tracks. You know? Well then there's like the asbestos abatement and although what the contractors are saying uh, our data may mm -hmm. not Require and I just read something. I don't think our batter requires an asbestos abatement contractor. James is just requiring. I don't know. Yes, yeah, probably. Okay. Put the tent up and all that stuff. Standards, but like I was talking to one of the HVAC companies, and they said they did. Colorado has a specific legal certification for it anyway, do they? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. See, and I guess they take the OSHA class, and they're good. Really? They just proved that they took the OSHA class. See, when we're done with that stuff in Denver, we had to have an abatement contractor do it, but he was just because it was just removing asbestos. I mean, we have. It's 1930s colonial in Old Town, and it has one of those gravity oh. octopus furnaces. Oh, yeah. Oil, baby. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, the old bunker fuel. You can't buy that anymore. They said it was a coal. They said it was an old coal furnace. Yeah, they went from coal to oil. And, yeah, it's nasty. And it's like it takes up half the basement. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. scary. Yeah. So it's the owner's like, well, we never took it out because it works good. I'm like, no, hold on. Mm -hmm. What I've seen them do is just cut in to replace and use the ductwork and put brand new units like sitting in there because it's it no, looks cost too much to like rip it completely yeah. out. And then because uh, those old houses had the uh, like the big pass throughs in the mm -hmm. floors that were just passive, you know, and they have the yeah, yeah, I do have to cut it apart. You have to cut it into pieces. Mm -hmm. And right. I'm thinking the biggest thing is you can't leave it because it, it does, it takes up. I guess so once you take out all out. the asbestos, but it takes up half the basement. It's scary, it's huge. <laughs> and it was funny because I didn't realize what like, they call them. They call them octopus mm -hmm. furnaces. And that's what they had like eight, nine yes. arms yeah. going every direction. Yes. Of the house. I never, that was the first time I'd seen one. I Both saw them were built like right around the 19, early 1900s. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. This yeah. one was 1930s. The cast iron? Man. 
No. It'd be cool to kind of reuse that front. Maybe. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's when you know you're in a relic. We commonly referred to as a money pit. When the contractor quotes you, oh, you get 20 grand, pull that out of here when you do that. <laughs> yeah. Some houses were meant to be bulldozed down or replaced because they had met their lifespan. 